Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new set of markers that have hit the market of Amazon recently. And they are from the company Calico, or Calico. I'm not sure how uh, how that is pronounced. But um, I, am, I was reached out to by that company and they wanted to know if I'd be interested in re uh, reviewing their brand new markers. And I like to review markers. I find it very interesting to see all these different markers that are coming out. And usually when a new marker comes out, someone asks me to review it. Um, I really enjoy doing marker art. I do a lot of freelance work in alcohol markers. And um, I feel like I know a pretty good amount of, um, I have a pretty good amount of knowledge with um, alcohol based markers. So if I can help you make the right choice for your art supplies, then, uh, then I'm happy to do it. So these come in a canvas bag, which is kind of standard these days. Most of these marker sets are coming in a standard bag. This set of 48 runs about $28, making each marker about 58 cents each. Now, of course, prices fluctuate all over the place on Amazon, and there's often coupons and whatnot. So, you know, it may be more, might be less, you know, depending on what sort of deal you come across. Uh, one interesting thing, interesting thing about the set that I thought was really cool is that it does come with a swatch with all the, the numbers so you can make sure that you have all your markers. I've never had a problem with a marker being missing before, but there you go. Um, they come in these little plastic trays that are actually um, that are actually divided, and I like this. <laughs> don't don't dump them out. Um, I like it. Let's, let's let's take a look. I like it because you could actually put these inside of a box, or you could make something like some sort of uh, marker storage, and then you can keep all your markers separate. So, say if you know markers that blend really well together, you can keep them together um, in their little grid, and they're not going to go anywhere. Um, so I think that's kind of a nice detail. I've seen this in the Artix markers as well. Um, also, the Bianio brush markers have these little um, these little cases in the bottom, and I think it's wonderful. I think um, I think when your packaging it can have a long life, that's great because it keeps it out of the trash. And um, I've seen ones. I've had markers that have the the cardboard inserts, like the old Artix style, and they're nice. They do the job. However, they do get if you're not careful when you put your markers back, they can get dented and these aren't going to get dented. So um, I think this is a great solution if you are going to keep them and use them for that. So the markers you're going to notice have a stripe on one end and that indicates that that is the brush end and the other end is the chisel end. And I know that looks like it went off pretty hard, but I do find the marker caps to be fairly easy to remove. They have a rounded triangle barrel, and they've got little um, kind of grips on the end, kind of like the color it markers to help you remove the caps. And the caps have numbers on the end, not names, but they do have numbers that correspond with the chart that comes with it. The markers are not perfect matches. Some are pretty good, but, um, as with most markers, they're not perfect matches and some are quite off. So you definitely want to make a swatch on the paper that you typically use. I did my swatch on the Ohuhu marker pad because um, I was planning on doing an illustration in that pad right afterwards. Uh, now I did notice that the lay down of the ink was really good, really smooth. I didn't get any speckling. Um, they felt really juicy. I swatched these with the brush tip and um, I liked the feeling of the brush tip. It was a, it was a fiber like felty feeling tip, not a, um, not a like a foam rubber tip like the Copics have, um, but it did, it released a fairly um, even amount of ink and I was pretty pleased with that. And um, generally you want to keep your alcohol markers stored flat, which is what I did uh, prior to using them for the first time. And that's where I came to my first con of this marker. So, you know, you do pros and cons, not that the markers are a con, but you know, I always list my pros and my cons when I do a review. So the thing that I noticed with these markers, when you're doing a larger picture is that um, the ink feed, the ink supply can't seem to keep up with the, um, with the rate of how fast you draw or how fast I draw. So let me show you a sketch that I did. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw this already, but um, I did this drawing here and uh, this is on the Ohuhu marker pad. It's not a slick um, plasticky coated paper like some marker papers are. So it does take more ink than say like a, like a plastic coated thin, thin paper, but it, you know, it's never had an issue. I've never had an issue with my markers not keeping up with the, um, with the paper. So I thought I'm 
I'm going to use a color that I don't think I would be blending out with anything else. I wouldn't really have much use for. So I decided to use a BG, BG5 because I thought it was kind of an oddball color. If I did want to lighten it, I could go with 144. Um, so I thought I, I would use that. Uh, I got about this much of the background done and the marker felt like it was running dry. And that was on the brush tip end. So then I went to the chisel tip end to try to finish it out. And then I got maybe as far as here and that was going dry. So I had to grab... Um, my Art and Fly Cool Gray Five, uh, Blue Gray Five, and I finished up with that. Um, but it was kind of it, it was kind of frustrating because I was pretty happy with my drawing, and I didn't want to uh, to mess up the coloring right off the start because I did my background first. Um, so that was my first issue. the The feed of the ink could not keep up with my with my drawing. Uh, speed. So um, that might be an issue if you're an illustrator or an artist that likes to do, like this is only eight and a half by eight and a half, it's not a huge illustration. Um, so if you're someone that needs to color in a large area, these markers may provide a lot of frustration. So that's why I, I put them all back in the case, brush tip down, so that I could get more ink to that end of the marker um, to hopefully prevent that in the future. The only problem with that was when I would uncap them, I was getting a little Spray. I was getting some ink spray. So um, I don't think that the marker is underfilled. I just think maybe it's whatever the nibs are made out of or um, maybe the pads on the inside of the markers are not reaching up into the nibs far enough, but I was not, it just couldn't keep up. Like the ink flow was not keeping up with my with my coloring and I haven't had that issue. I mean, maybe like after doing a page or something, but I've never had an issue with a marker kind of um, losing its ink that quickly, a brand new marker. And it does seem like those, like there's still ink in that marker. It just, um, it just couldn't keep up with that much continuous coloring, which I thought was a little bit of a, an issue and would be an issue if you're doing larger, um, larger work. So I do have a very patchy background because I, the marker wouldn't keep up. Um, and uh, my Art and Fly marker that I was using to finish it up had been used quite a bit, so it, it wasn't fully fresh. And uh, so that was frustrating. Um, but then coloring the skin tones, I used uh, 26, and I thought the ink laid down pretty well, and I did layer up to do the shading. Um, but I noticed that with that marker, it, I, by the time I was done coloring, actually about halfway through coloring the skin, I was finding the tip was starting to feel soft. And if you've ever used the alcohol markers that have those type of, um, of uh, brush tips, let me grab a paper here, uh, you'll know that feeling when your marker starts to fray, and I feel like that is going to happen soon with these markers. Now, the Ohuhu markers, which I, uh, I'm i kind of comparing because the, the, the feeling of the tip feels similar, but the Ohuhu markers don't, don't seem to run out that quick. The Ohuhu uh, markers are double-ended, so if that happened, you could flip it in and put it back. But these are not. These have a blunt end that feeds into the, the, uh, the pad in the center, the ink pad in the center, and then it's got the end that you color with. So you, you could replace these nibs if you had... Um, another nib, like the um, the Art and Fly markers will fit these, and the Art and Fly markers are a better nib, but this nib is already feeling soft, and you know, all I've colored is that illustration over there, so um, I mean, I still get a really nice, smooth, flat lay down of ink, so I'm not complaining about that, but I definitely think these are going to fray before the ink is used up. Um, another issue that I had here was that with the color selection was that some of the colors were very samey. 35, 37, and 45 are all very similar yellows and you're not going to get a dynamic blend. They're too close together. But then you've got other colors that are too far apart together to get a good blend. So I thought for a 48 set, some of the colors were kind of wasted where it would have been better suited to have like a paler yellow or maybe a darker yellow something in between the 24 and the 35. Uh, 26 and 27 are very similar. That doesn't bother me so much because if you do a lot of, um, if you're doing a lot of uh, earth tones, like you're doing a lot of portraits and you're blending out to that lighter color, your lighter colors always seem to use up quicker because of the high alcohol content and also always seem to dry out faster. So having two of those is not a huge deal, but, um, but then you've got these two that are very similar. Um, like those two are quite similar. Those two are quite similar. Um, those two are quite similar. I feel like you could have had a, they could have maybe taken another step apart in some of these colors so that uh, you could have a greater blending variety and a greater variety of color. So um, that's another issue that I had there. 
like 81 and 85 are so similar. Now purples are difficult to blend, but those are so close together that they really don't offer that much. If you had something in between like uh, this and that, that would be a much better option. Um, and like the undertones of that purple, there's not much that you'd be able to blend with that because it's so, uh, it's so gray blue undertoned. So the color, the color selection is not, um, is not the best in my opinion. The colors are, you probably might recognize some of the color numbers and color names. They are the same as the Shin Han Touch Twin Markers, which you can get refills for. So you could refill these if the nibs lasted or if you wanted to invest in better nibs um, because I don't think those brush tip nibs are gonna last that long. Um, you could do that. Um, although it might be, it might kind of wipe out the affordability of these markers if you go that route, uh, but it is an option. Um, so I actually grabbed my Ohuhu swatches because they also run on that same inks, that same ink line, that same ink um, color system. And I wanted to compare those yellows because I have um, 45 in Ohuhu, which appears lighter. So I'm wondering if maybe this was misinked, like maybe they used the wrong ink to fill that marker. And then 37, which looks, um, which looks like the 37 I have from Ohuhu, and then 35, which is, which is pretty close to what I have for 35. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe 37 and 45 might have gotten the same ink by mistake. I'm not sure. Those are just way so way too similar to put together in such a small set, I think. And not saying 48 markers is a small set, but with alcohol markers, you need a greater variety of colors to be able to do blending because it's not like a water-based marker where you just, you know, grab a water brush and you blend it out. Um, you cut, you need to have incremental steps between your colors. So not too close together, not too far apart. And I feel like, um, this set was kind of randomly put together. Um, you do have a few browns, like again, the, the 103 and 21 are about the same in value. One's a little bit more orangey than the other. Um, there isn't much between like 103 and 107, but that's a pretty big jump if you're trying to do somebody with darker skin tones and you're trying to blend out to a, to a highlight, that might be problematic. Although the, I will say this ink does blend pretty well. So um, I would, didn't, wouldn't really recommend these to an illustrator drawing larger or if you're working in coloring books where you're doing a large area, I would not recommend these markers. However, um, I did some stamping because I was curious. I'm like, well, I just got the stamp set. I thought it was really cute. And um, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And I thought these details are tiny. So that will really put those brush nibs to the test. And you know what, they did pretty well. I've got to say they did pretty well with this. And I think it has to do with the fact that the ink feeds slower than other brush markers. I was, I had no problem blending. I had no problem getting into the small details. And these are, this is like probably more detail than I usually like to use for stamps. So, um, so yeah, I had no problem coloring. They were very pleasurable to use for this. Uh, so I would say if you're a stamper who's looking to try some brush markers, who maybe wants kind of like an intermediate brush marker, they want to see if they like the style of marker before investing in like maybe another marker range that has a larger selection of colors or maybe buying one or two at a time of Copics because you want to get something that you can refill. Um, you know, it might, it would be a, a nice option. The nibs are not as good as say like the, the Biennio, the Copics, the, um, the Altenew, the, uh, Blick Illustrator, uh, I'm sorry, the Blick Studio Markers or the Spectrum Noir Illustrator, those all have a higher quality nib, um, but they're also much more expensive. So this would be a nice kind of entry level or gateway into markers if you're not sure if you want brush markers. If you're sure you want to invest in brush markers, I would not recommend this set. I would recommend with going one of the larger Ohuhu brush marker sets or going with... Um, a, uh, a company that doesn't duplicate between sets so you can kind of build the marker packs as you go. Or maybe, you know, if you're not someone who colors a lot with, with brush markers, I probably would go with like maybe like the Spectrum Noir uh, tri-blends because they, um, they don't have as much ink but if you're just doing small images, you're not gonna go through as much. Um, I don't know, there's, a, there's so many markers today that you can find something that can meet your specific needs. Uh, and that's why I do all these reviews, so to help you decide what, um, uh, what would work for you. So this marker set, just like any marker set, it has, it has benefits and it has disadvantages. Uh, I love the storage that it comes with. Um, I, like the, um, I like the quality of the ink. I'm just not crazy about the ink selection colors that they put together. Um, and like with the grays, for instance, you've got two 
cool grays, you got two warm grays, and you got a blue gray. I think it would be so much more useful to have like five cool grays and have them be like a cool gray one, three, five, seven, nine. Um, because then you can layer over almost anything over a cool gray and it's going to look all right. I mean, if you have warm grays and cool grays, yeah, I'd use warm grays more for warm colors. But, um, or to get a richer, like under earth tones or richer colors like that. Um, but, you know, a cool, a set of, uh, five cool grays would have been so much more useful. Now you can blend, like here, I used um, I used the cool gray one as a base, so I can I can actually do that little demo for you really quick. Don't mind me being super cheap and using <laughs> my, uh, my scrap paper. Um, so I'll do cool gray, cool gray one, cool gray five, and warm gray three. So I have a one, three, five blend. Um, now since the undertones are different, it's not gonna be perfect, but um, you know, Perfection in a cheap marker set is probably not what you're going to find. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to saturate a patch of paper here. Well, actually, let's go to an area that doesn't have anything underneath it. Let's do this. You can kind of see, I think, even here, I haven't used this marker a lot, and it's having a hard time keeping up with, um, with how fast I'm trying to color it in. Now, keep in mind, this is how I would sketch, not how I would color in a stamped image, so it's it works fine for the stamped images. It's just not working. It's not going to work so well if you like to sketch fast with markers. So you can do the flicking technique with this. Um, the, br the brush tips are flexible enough for that. And if you have a stubborn area, you can go in with a chisel tip and you can, you can uh, try to force them into submission. Like that. Uh, go back in with that cool color. Okay, and that's how you could do your shading for something, right? You could get those light, mediums, and darks. But if you just leave the grays alone as it is, you can see, well, maybe you can see, I would imagine you could see, um, in the center, there's definitely a more brown undertone to that warm gray that I used in the center. But if you're going to go over it with another color, like here I did ma like a magenta purpley color. Let's do, uh, let's do a blue over this one. Let's do 67 because it's, you know, it's kind of a uh, medium colored blue. Um, I can go over that and there's, there should be enough color in that that it should negate that warmer undertone a bit so you won't really notice it. So that's what I would do if you had to shade something that you don't have a good blend for. Um, I'm going to let that dry in order to see the, uh, the actual blend that we ended up with. I'll grab my heat tool. Hopefully it's not too flammable. Um, I did notice a lot of odor with these. At first I was wondering if I did, if it was fumey, but I had my wax melter going um, and I was feeling like everything felt fumey that day. I just think I had too many scents going on. Um, but yeah, I'm not noticing a big, a big odor with these. They're not as bad as a Sharpie. Let me just compare with a Copic here to, okay, hardly any odor with a Copic. Let me get a Okay, these do have more odor than a Copic. I feel like I've burnt out all of my, like... Actually, it's, it's funny, because I do have quite a sensitive sense of smell. But, um, like, the... Yeah, Copic is less less smell. Um, I can get finer lines with a Copic than I can with that. Um, than I can with the... Uh, the Coleco, even though the Coleco's are brand new and my Copics are like 10 years old. That's about as fine as I can get with the uh, Coleco, which is not bad, but I, those tips are gonna are gonna wear down, I have a feeling. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, okay, so there, it's pretty dry. It's a little patchy, I think, because of the amount of ink we had to put in there to, uh, to get that. It's not a perfect blend. Um, I don't know if I'd be happy with that, personally. Um, in an illustration, but it will definitely get you there. You know, it'll it'll give you some shading. It'll. I wasn't happy with how choppy this um, this came out. To be honest, uh, I would have gotten a much. Ooh, let's zoom out. I would have gotten a much smoother effect with um, with other brush markers that I have, or even other chisel tip markers that had more of a variety of colors, where I had more colors, like um, like a larger set of markers. I could get a smoother look because I just would have those steps in between the colors. I mean, I'm happy with this illustration as it is now. I've had a couple of days to, you know, fret about it. I'm okay with it now. But, um, uh, but yeah, I was pretty frustrated with that. But I wasn't frustrated coloring these stamped images. So, I mean, as long as you have realistic expectations and these, and you know the pros and cons of these markers, um, you know, they are a very inexpensive marker and it might be just a thing for you. Uh, for me personally, given the, um, the different brands of markers I've used, I think you could do a little bit 
better um, in quality. It would be a little bit more expensive, but I think I would probably recommend if you want to be in this uh, budget brush marker area, I think I would choose the um, the Ohuhu ones over this just for the fact that you can reverse those nibs and also the color selection. Even in their 48 set, there it's got a better variety that you can blend into. So um, that's, that's my opinion. You may disagree with me. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, I do really like the fact that the storage is reusable and I will definitely use that storage. I mean, even if the marker is just, you know, crapped out my next time I used them, I would keep the storage and I would use that because I think that's useful and I want to encourage brands um, to do reusable packaging so that you're not buying something and throwing away half of it because the, the, the packaging, because it's no good. If your packaging can be reused, I think that's really awesome. So uh, there you have it. Um, I hope this helped you make up your minds about markers and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.